subject to credit. Third dollar activation fee speed. Maximums use rules and restrictions apply. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with T. West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. This has to have been one of the craziest weeks I have ever experienced in my life. Now, I lived through the Democratic Convention in Chicago of 68, through the Vietnam War protests, through the Nixon problems, uh, everything. I mean, I'm 83 years old. I have never in my life seen anything like this week with a presidential candidate. The president of the United States this past week has been absolutely the worst president I've ever seen in my life. Now, conceitedly, I am not a Trump supporter, but let me tell you a story. I didn't support him. I voted for Hillary. I voted for Hillary because she was the better of the two. I I wasn't particularly thrilled with either one, but she was the better of the two. Uh, Now he's elected president. When he got sworn in, I said, he's my president. Even though I did not vote for him, he is my president, and I'm going to support him. I have to, we have to give him a break. He is our president. I said it on this show. I wrote about it. He is our president. We must help the man. Well, it only took me four days to change my mind. He did so many crazy things the first four days. Remember, who had the most people at the inauguration ceremony? He or Obama? Things like that. Such stupidity that I know after four days, the man, I was right. He was not qualified to be president, so my support of the man, because he was my president, lasted a mere four days. This past week, he has proven once again, this time big, the biggest ever, that he's not qualified to be president. Uh, Let's start first with uh, the summit. The summit was what? Yesterday? Yesterday was the summit. Trump and Putin in Helsinki, Finland. Uh, and we all saw what happened afterwards at the uh, the press, when the press got together and they were asking questions, and the two of them were sitting there. Uh, I'm going to just roll with things off my mind tonight. Uh, most will be connected, some will not seem connected, but this is basically going to be a Trump evening with a hit here and a hit there, lacking in consistency, but you'll understand the points I'm going to make. For example... What did Trump tell us during the campaign? What has he told us since he's been elected president? Stand up for America. Stand up for America. Well, yesterday, when he was with Putin, he did not stand up for America. He bowed. He almost kneeled. He bowed. He bowed. He disgraced himself. He disgraced our country. You know, people in our country today, 24 hours later, since these two fellows met, And in Russia, here's the reaction of the people, the people on the street. This is how it's being reported. In the United States, the summit was an absolute failure for our country. Trump did a lousy job. He he just did lousy. Uh, He said the wrong things. He acted the wrong way. Uh, Bad job, embarrassing, especially when he had the opportunity to nail Putin before the whole world and say, We know you did this with regard to the election. You hacked it uh, in 2016. He didn't do that. Uh, Instead, he said, I don't buy it. I don't believe my intelligence people. He changed today, but we'll get to today in a few minutes. Uh, Harry had an opportunity in front of the whole world to say you did wrong, to stand up to Putin, because he never stands up to Putin. But he backed off. He didn't stand up to Putin. He basically agreed with him. He believes Putin. He said, I believe the man. He told me he didn't do it. I believe him. This is one of the world's most, he's a bad guy, Putin. Uh, He was raised to lie. He kills. Uh, He's violent. He puts political uh, opponents in jail six months before an election. Uh, He's not a good man. He's not a good man, but... It was a failure as far as the United States was concerned. But in Russia, immediately, there's comparable Secretary of State in Russia. I forget the guy's name. He says, we're dancing with joy today. It was a wonderful uh, meeting, these two. 
And, of course, because Russia came out looking good, Putin came out looking good, Putin handled, handed Trump a line of shit, uh, and he bought it. He bought it, okay? So, now, uh, let's talk about this. Trump. He's got a lot of brass testicles, and they weren't good ones. They were soft yesterday, so they weren't hard. Uh, he's talking about uh, how America has treated Russia over the years, and that's why America and Russia don't get along. And, and he said that it was American, it is American, foolishness and stupidity, quote-unquote, foolishness and stupidity, okay, that it's caused <laughs> excuse me, bad, a bad relationship between our two countries. And it was going to stop. It should not be. Foolishness and stupidity. They've been trying to steal from us, put us down, etc., ever since the end of World War II. All right? This has been ongoing. These have been bad people in one way or another. I think, I don't know, Trump's got children that are about the age of my children in their 50s. I don't think he remembers that when they went to school and there were air raid drills because we were concerned the Russians, this would be back in the 60s and into the 70s, were going to drop an atomic bomb on our country, that our children had to get on their hands and knees under their desks. Not that the desks would help them in any way. In New York State, I forget who our governor was at the time. I lived in New York State. It was recommended we build concrete air shelters under the ground in our backyards for fear the bomb was going to come. So, you know, these are not good people on the other side. Now, what does he say? What does Trump say besides he said, stand up for America? He has said, America first. We're going to make America first. America is first. Well, I'll tell you, the only thing I see that he's trying to make first is himself. So instead of saying America first anymore, he might as well call it for what it is and for what he's doing. Me first. Donald Trump first. Me first. Now, he got materials. They said he got about 100 pages of materials prior to the meeting from his intelligence people. And these materials clearly set forth that he had to stand up to Putin uh, about what they what Putin was doing with regard to the election, what Russia had done in hacking us, because Trump never admits this, and he had to do it. And they told him what he had to say. He disregarded all instructions from his top intelligence people. He disregarded the hundred pages of material which he read that morning. He doesn't read, but they say he read that. And he went out there and said what he he wanted to say, which was the same thing he has been saying. Uh, He, Putin tells me, he didn't do it. I've got to believe him. Uh, This guy's sick. All right. Now, let's go to another issue. Trump said, and I hope you don't mind the way I'm handling your show tonight, but there's so many things I just felt I should just hit and miss and run along the way here. Trump said, we are the top two nuclear powers in the world. This is true. We are. Okay. And that we have 90 to 95 percent between our two countries of the nuclear weapons. We do. (laughs) No question about it. Not because Russia is brilliant today, but because at the end of World War II, when everything was being split up, it was decided Russia was still big. Don't forget the, with the Berlin Wall wasn't even constructed. It had not come down. Uh, Russia was a major power. They stopped being a major power in 1990. It's a long way up. And Russia was a big shot. And they had a lot of nuclear weapons. So they got a lot, and we got a little bit more than them, okay? But that's not reason enough that we have to stand together with Russia today, the United States, uh, and control the world uh, because nuclear weapons alone don't make them our equal. I'll bet you most of their nuclear weapons in Russia are covered with dust. Russia today is not the big Russia of post-World War II. It's the big Russia of today. It's a small country. The United States is number one in the world's economy. Russia is number 30 in the world's economy. The sanctions we imposed on them are hurting them bad. If they didn't have oil, all the oil they have in Russia, they'd be in shit shape. They're in bad shape, but they're not in shit shape yet, okay? And uh, they're they're not even a 
any type of op other than nuclear weapons. They are not any opposition milita militarily. Their army and navy sucks. They don't have that big of an army and navy. You've got to take a look at their ships. Their carriers are pre-World War II or during World War II. I don't think they built a new aircraft carrier since World War II. And you've got, you can see them on the Internet, Google. <laughs> you'll see what they look like, and you'll say, oh, my God. And this is the country that we're kowtowing to. They're nowhere near our equal. I don't see them dropping a nuclear weapon on us uh, because if they do, they know we're going to bomb them at the same time, and then all the other countries are going to nuclear weapons are going to bomb each other as well as us and Russia, and it's the end of the world. We're going to spend the next 30 years, you know, living out of caves. And that's not a joke. Think about it. All right. Now, he said yesterday, uh, he said yesterday, Trump, that he did not support, he did not believe his intelligence people. He didn't go along with them. Well, Today, 27 hours after the meeting from yesterday, you saw what happened today. All the Republicans are going on TV and they're saying, we don't know this guy. We don't agree with this guy. For the first time, they're all like, most of them are lining up, okay? Uh, we don't agree with what he said yesterday. For example, he said, you know, he doesn't follow what the intelligence agencies tell him. He has always had bad faith in the intelligence agencies of the United States. He said this when he was running for office, and he still believes it. Today, what did he do? We went back. He went on television today. He had to eat his words. And he says that he has great support. I'm quoting this. Great support for American intelligence agencies. Now, uh, he also said, uh, and I don't quite understand this. He, he, he said it's not Russia uh, that uh, hacked. They said they didn't hack. It could be somebody else, but it's not Russia. I believe Putin, et cetera, et cetera. And he said something like, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. It was like he was admitting it was Russia all of a sudden. But today he says, oh, no, 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 no. He said, I knew something was wrong. And I went back and I was looking. I got a trans copy of the transcript of what I said. And that word wouldn't should not be wouldn't, it should be would. So it would read, I don't see any reason why it would be Russia, why it would be Russia. I mean, out of all the shit that flew yesterday and today, he found one word that he could eliminate, and it would change the whole meaning, he thought. But there were so many other words spoken. He was only changing that one word. The man lies. The man lies. He creates a new story. He lied about the intelligence agencies today from yesterday. He's lying about what he said about Russia from yesterday till today. Uh, and that's just Donald Trump. Let's talk about NATO, because before he went to visit to Helensky, uh, he uh, had the NATO meeting in Brussels. Uh, now, he criticized the members of NATO for 48 hours, the two days of meetings. You saw him on television. What a lousy job he did. He was a bully in a China shop. He was beating everybody up. You owe us money. You pay up. You know what I'm beginning to think? You know, because he said they don't pay their fair share, and a lot of these, country, these countries aren't. Either they don't want to, can't afford it, or they got in the way with it for years. I understand all this they should pay. Uh, but he's so hard-ass when it comes to making everyone pay their own way, like they're screwing the United States. I think he learned all this because think back. What's Donald Trump's reputation as a contractor? He never paid anybody, or he paid very little. He was in lawsuits up the ass. He had thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, of lawsuits going on any given day because everyone had to sue him for money. I think with everybody beating up on him, that's about the only thing he learned in his lifetime, how to beat up on somebody else to collect the dollar because it was done to him his whole life because he was a lousy financial risk. Uh, now, he says that uh, the other countries in NATO besides the United States, they're just not smart people. They're not smart people. He's the only one that's smart. And he said, and I quote, that he is a, and I quote, very stable genius. 
Uh, you know, one, I don't think he's a genius. And when he throws in the word, sta- word stable, like stability, I, I know he's out in love field because this man is not stable at all. And I don't think he's a genius. I think he, there's something wrong with him mentally, and I mean this seriously. This man is, wake up, America. This man is going to lead us into a war. He's going to lead us into an economic depression, just like 29. This tariff war is going to result in it. I've said this. I've written this for the last few months. It's going to come. Next year, you're going to have a recession like you won't believe. We're not feeling it yet. Three months from now, we're going to start feeling things because we're not going to be, the farmers aren't going to be able to sell their soybeans, okay? Uh, cars, people aren't going to be buying cars. And just all this tariff shit back and forth. He's created a war that's going to hurt everyone. But if it hurts everyone, you've got the Great Depression, 1929, that lasted 10 years. All right? What else have I, can I think about about this guy now? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Uh, he has a habit. Trump has a habit. He calls everyone stupid. I have never seen anyone, politician, non-politician, use that word so consistently and so much during the campaign, since his election. Everyone's stupid. He's the only one that isn't stupid, okay? Now, (laughs) where does he call people stupid? Uh, And before I I get into who he's calling stupid, you'll recognize this. Think of Forrest Gump. Remember Forrest Gump? He said, stupid is as stupid does. Stupid is as stupid does. Well, I think Donald Trump's stupid, and he stupid, and he does as stupid. Now he says, the people are stupid. He says, our laws are stupid. He says, we've been stupid in the way we've been dealing with other countries. He says, White House staffers are stupid. The FBI is stupid. The National Football League is is stupid. The Democrats are stupid. Filibustering is stupid. And journalists, the press, is stupid. He's the only one that isn't stupid. Isn't it amazing? When I was in college, I was in the ROTC. And that was the last place for me. I was in the Air Force ROTC. And it wasn't the classwork or anything. Uh, it, It was the marching. I had difficulty. I had two left feet. And I was always out of step marching. And whoever was my lieutenant or whatever he was telling us left face, right face, about face, I was always tripping over my own feet, and I was out of step. And I kept hearing, Patron, you're out of step. And I got demerits for being out of step. I think I had more demerits than anyone else the first two years I was in the ROTC. Anyhow, uh, I was stupid. I didn't know how to march. (laughs) I was. Uh... But that was legitimate. This isn't legitimate, what he does. Everything's stupid. Stupid. Now, Trump says when he went to London, he did. They they treated him. They did not treat him royally. But he didn't. He was not entitled to be treated royally, okay? One of the first things he said while he was still in England, in the United Kingdom, he says, The people aren't making me feel welcome, especially the people in London. I don't feel welcome. Uh, Well, why would they make him feel welcome? They don't like him. They may be smarter than the rest of the European countries. I don't know, but they really don't like him. Well, everyone in Europe doesn't like him. Uh, And they did make him feel unwelcome. 250,000 people came came out one day to protest his visit to England. 250,000 English people came out to protest his presence in their country. Now he's going to see the, he's going to go to the Queen. He's going to see the Queen. This is a big deal for a visitor to see the Queen of England. And the way the game is normally played, when a big shot president like the President of the United States visits England, he should have gotten a parade in an open-air, horse-drawn carriage down the streets of London with his wife next to him and thousands of people, that 250,000 people, along the streets, along the curbside, block after block, mile after mile, yelling in praise with enthusiasm of Donald Trump. Trump, 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 because he's the president of the United States. But he didn't get that. Everyone else got it. He doesn't get it because they don't like him. Now, 
part of the game is if the President of the United States or some big shot comes, they also give him a white tie, black tail dinner at night. That's a big deal. <laughs> All right? He didn't get the white tie, black tail dinner at night. Because what are they going to do? We've got all these people protesting. They didn't know what the hell was going to happen. They didn't know if they could protect him. So instead, they went to a castle 30 miles outside of London, and he met the queen for tea. Yes, he met the queen for tea, and he went on the grounds. The public was not permitted on the grounds. He was driven in in a series of black vehicles. Uh, there were one or two lines of military. You know how they dress up real sharp. They, they dress old-fashioned in the military there. And the first thing he and the queen were to do was to do an inspection of the troops, walk down one line, go back the other line. Uh, one thing you never do in England, you are never late for a meeting with the queen. No one has ever been late for a meeting with the Queen. It just is not done. It shows gross disrespect. But Donald Trump's late for everything. He showed up 12 minutes late for his meeting, and there was Elizabeth standing out there talking to a soldier. <laughs> what the hell else was she going to do? She probably didn't even know. Waiting for our president because he was running late to show up. Uh, you just don't do these things. You just don't do these things. But he did it. And he wonders why they don't like him. Uh, and he, he felt unwelcome. I want to talk about one of his couple of his supporters right now. Jim Jordan, that congressman. I don't know where he's from, what state he's from. He's uh, somewhere in the Midwest. And he's been in Congress 12 years. I just realized that. He's the guy that's never wearing a jacket. His hair is a little sandy color. It's a little off his forehead. And he... Always talks nasty. He's a Republican congressman. He talks nasty all the time. And Democrats are vicious. They're no good. We're corrupt. Oh, my God. He's worse than Democrats talking about Republicans. He's just not a nice guy. He's a leader of that far-right group. I think there's 32 congressmen in it that screw everything up, even for the Republicans. They can't get votes on some things. Well, He's got himself a little bit of a jam now. I'm not saying what happened happened, but I'm just going to share it, and I want to put it in perspective for you. It has been said uh, that uh, he was a coach. He was a, an assistant wrestling coach, I think, for eight years at uh, the name of the university. Escapes me. I apologize. Uh, but he was a, a, an assistant coach in wrestling for eight years, and apparently the doctor, the doctor who was uh, – taking care of the wrestlers, had a propensity for abuse of the wrestlers. Uh, how far this abuse went, I don't know. He was taking showers with them, and a big shower, but he didn't have to take a shower with them. Uh, and he, they, There was something going on that wasn't right, and they said at the time, seven of the wrestlers that he coached have now come out and said, this went on. But not only did it go on, but that Congressman Jim Jordan knew about it. Mm, seven have said it. He knew about it. Well, he says he didn't know. And all his Republican friends in Congress are saying, we don't believe this. You know, give him a fair shot. Well, here's what I've got to say. I'm not saying he, he knew or he didn't know. But if he knew, he's supposed to do something about it. Because here's, remember this. Remember Joe Paterno at Penn State. He was dishonored, his statue removed from the grounds of Penn State University. He died in shame and disgrace after a distinguished life because they said he knew and he didn't tell. He knew and he didn't do anything about it, okay? And if that's the case with Jim Jordan, then he should suffer the same disgrace that Joe Paterno was put to. Fair is fair. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Now, I want to stay with Trump, too, on this. I'm jumping around, but this is the kind of night I told you it was going to be. We have a mercenary army in this country. You know that. You know, we may have 10,000 troops in Afghanistan, but we probably got another 10,000 troops that are 
contract troops. They work for a private corporation, and we send them over to fight. We don't know the statistics on them. One, we don't know what they cost us. Number two, we don't know how many are killed. Number three, we don't know how many are injured, because they're not in the numbers. All, we're, all they tell us about are those that are for real soldiers over there fighting. And they do this to hide the numbers and what's happening and to hide the money. Well, Blackwater was the company, and it, its founder was Eric Prince. His sister today, by the way, is a member of the president's cabinet. I don't recall which which department she has, but she's on the, on the president's cabinet. And Eric Prince. Eric Prince make, made a lot of money. Eric Prince and his company, it's no longer Blackwater. Blackwater got in some trouble, so they, they sort of dissolved Blackwater, and they started a new company. It's called Founder Services Group. Founder Sur- Frontier, no, Frontier Services Group. And he's chairman of that company. He was chairman of Blackwater. And Eric Prince and the CIA are in present negotiations, it's being said, okay, to remove all U.S. military from Afghanistan. We've only been there 16 years. And replace them with 6,000 mercenaries from the Frontier Services Group. So Prince will make a hell of a lot more money. Now, I don't think this is right. Because, number one, if they're getting paid to fight, the war's never going to end. We've been at it 16 years and haven't ended. It'll be another 32 years. And because they're getting paid for every soldier they send in as a mercenary, <coughs> they're never going to back up. The war's going to go on forever, further than it has. But what really bothers me, and I'm concerned because our president is Donald Trump, who thinks he's everything. I, I honestly believe he wishes to be a dictator. He only likes dictators. Putin, China's Che, the Philippines, Duarte, uh, Kim from North Korea. He wants to be like them. What did he say about two weeks ago? They're presidents for life. Isn't that wonderful? He wants to be president for life. He wants to be another Putin, okay? <laughs> I'm worried that these mercenary armies will end up being a private army for a president like Donald Trump. And if he's ever going to take over the government and he's got to show a little force and strength, that mercenary army provided by Eric Prince will back him. Not right. Not good. We shouldn't even do it this way. Let's go back the way things were. The public has a right to know, and they should know how many soldiers are fighting where all over the world. You start doing that, people won't be, will start getting upset about these wars more so than they are, and we might get out of some of them. Then there's this Brett Kavanaugh. He's going to be a Supreme Court justice. I believe this. Let me tell you this. A president has the right to select his own people for the Supreme Court. He has a right to select his own people for his cabinet heads. Unless one of them is so far out, the Senate should approve them. It has been that way until recent years. You, he's the president. He picks who he wants. That's the way it is. Well, no, no more. But they're going to get Kavanaugh, the Republicans, and the president, because they control uh, the Senate where he has to get two approvals. Uh, I don't like the guy. He is far right. He's not going to be like Kennedy, uh, you know, switch voter. He's going to be far to the right. And he'll be sitting there. The guy's like 52 years old or something. He's in there for 30 years. For, if he doesn't die, he's in there for 30 years. And, uh, see, a judge, I always thought, should be neutral. He should be a neutral arbiter. He's not going to be, though, because he's an ultra-conservative, the far right. Now, there's something that has to do with the Constitution. I've got to talk fast. My time is running out here. When the Constitution was approved back in the late 1700s, the average age, the lifetime, uh, and this is the way they describe him, of a free white citizen was 35 years. So when they said we're going to let a Supreme Court judge have a lifetime appointment, he was going to die around 35. No one dies at 35 today, and we've got a problem that. Part of the Constitution has to be changed. We've got to have a number of years because it's not the way it was back then. You follow me? And that is my show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry for jumping around all over the place, but I thought it would be interesting. I'm back on Facebook every morning doing Key West Lou Live, three or four minutes of something like this, but only on one issue. Join me if you would, Key West Lou Live. The numbers for this show keep going up. I love you people who listen. I love the people who are going to listen. This show's taken off in the last year. 
Irma and me still out there. If you haven't bought my book, consider buying it. Amazon.com, fifteen fourteen ninety five, fifteen dollars. Uh, the story of the Hurricane Irma and how it personally affected me. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to being with you again next week. Take a moment and think about where you are. Now, let's dream about where you'd rather be. A Disney Cruise Line vacation, perhaps. Let us help. We'll add some ocean waves. Perfect. Now, the kids are playing at their own clubs. You're enjoying a romantic dinner. And tonight, the whole family will gather for fireworks over the ocean. More fireworks. When you're dreaming of the perfect vacation for the whole family, the difference is Disney. Visit DisneyCruise.com or call your travel agent today.